So do you know uh, anything about urban workshop? Urban workshop? Uh, me, no, I don't. Uh, you look at that handsome guy, Steve. Hi, he, handsome guy, Steve. <laughs> uh, he's owner of uh, Urban Workshop. Uh, he owns a, a very, very uh, so-called a handy workshop uh, in, in terms of uh, making prototypes, making idea, uh, making uh, whatever is a handmade uh, samples or 3D uh, printing samples for any new idea, new concepts. So is it like a machine shop or something? Yes. And actually it's more than a machine shop because um, the way he set up, you can do soft goods, plastic, paper, um, metal, even clay, and also uh, he has a, a computer uh, 3D printer. So if you, any, uh, I, uh, p any designer try to uh, create a 3D uh, model and he can turn the 3D model into a physical uh, product by having a 3D printer out output uh, the, the concept, uh, output the, the image uh, from 3D uh, digital to 3D physical. Okay, so I guess uh, it's like a high-end uh, fancy uh, hobby shop. You can do anything pretty much. Uh, Steve, you might like, answer that. Model shop. Yeah, I'll jump in here. I mean, I'm far enough away from you that you, you never make the trek down here anyway. But uh, basically, it's a membership-based workshop. So this used to be my engineering and manufacturing company, and I converted it over to a membership-based shop. So we have every engineering design manufacturing tool you can think of, and members come in, and you know, some, some of it's hobbyists, but about half of our membership is small businesses that work completely out of here. Um, they do roughly $20 million a year revenue, basically out the back door of the building. And uh, yeah, it's pretty crazy. But we do tons of classes too, because a lot of times people come in with an idea that they want to make something, but really don't know how to do it. So we'll get them connected up with other members and run them through some classes, teach them how to use the equipment and, uh, and coach them where we can and point them in Brian's direction once they got things figured out. So if I want to do something 3D, do I make it myself or do I hire you guys to do it? Well, it's definitely geared towards, you know, do it yourself. Um, I, I kind of tell people, think of it like a gym membership, right? Monthly dues, come and go as you please, work on whatever you want using our tools to do it. Um, but we do have, you know, we're fully staffed. So we have a lot of staff to help you along the way. So get where, do you, where are you located? We're in Costa Mesa. So we're right alongside John Wayne Airport. You might even hear a couple of planes in the background when we're talking here at some point. Interesting. Yeah. yeah, if you're in the neighborhood, drop in, have a look. We do tours all the time. What uh, uh, and uh, how much is a membership fee? Uh, well, there's a few options, but month to month gives the most flexibility. That's one ninety nine a month. Okay. So a lot of people will come in. We have a lot of people like right now with COVID. A lot of people coming in trying to get their side hustles on, right? So they come in, you know, pay for a couple of months, give it a go. If it works, great. They sign up for a year or two, and. Uh, if it doesn't work, well, that's okay too. They just cancel the membership and go back to what they were doing. So it's pretty pretty low risk if you're starting a business. Okay, so if I have a project, uh, do I have a time limit? How much I use the shop? Or, no, or as long as we're open. Um, you can, we have people right now who are here all day long, every day. Uh, yeah, we're open seven days a week, uh, nine to nine during the week and nine to four on the weekends. It's a more than 20,000 square footage, right? At 28,000. So yeah, it's a big facility. Very big. So there's a lot of a uh, um, space and also there's a conference room and also computer lab um, yeah. and also hand, handmade lab. Handmade. Uh, Steve, do you have a video of your workshop or your location or your everything? Actually, I do. I, I did a cell phone video tour a while back. Um, I did it as kind of a joke, but it's caught on like wildfire. So 
If you go to our website and scroll to the bottom of the page, it's on there. It's urbanworkshop.net. Steve, can you drop the link? Steve, can you drop the link in the in the chat? Oh, sure, sure. Dig that now. So welcome, Peter. Uh, you have a little difficulty to sign in this Zoomina. Peter, you need to unmute your mic. Here you go. Can you talk? Hi, my name is Steve Trinidad. Be... Hello, Peter, are you there? I don't know. Maybe he can't hear us. I don't know. Or maybe he's trying to connect his mic or something. I, I pulled up the video. Uh, you guys want me to share it to play for you live? Or you guys already have it? Uh, Steve, 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 you're you're muted. I just posted it on the chat, so there's a, a direct link to it. I you I can share it, or you can share it, so we can all see it together. Oh, uh, that's that's Brian's call. <laughs> Again. Okay, Brian. Brian, I I pull it up. Uh, would you like me to share the workshop video? Workshop video from Steve. Yeah, of course. Uh, you have, so you have to allow me to share. He he wants to uh, he wants to play it now, Brian. Sorry. Yep. I thought um, Steve put the put up the uh, chat. Everybody can view, right? Oh yeah, I was gonna yeah. say everybody can just view it whenever because I think it's kind of a lengthy video. Yeah, it's like 10, 10, 11 minutes long. Oh, I see. Yeah, 14, 14 minutes, 17 seconds. I can now mine. Yeah. No, yeah, yeah, you can you can keep keep them uh, for later on. Uh, I think the video, I never see the video. I assume uh, Steve can, can make up a very good video for his introduction. But Steve, what you, what you made is from your cell phone, right? That's correct, yeah. Yeah, I'm looking at it. Wow, pretty neat. Yeah, <laughs> thanks. Good job. Well, um, if you really need to have um, your prototype or your idea come to a come to a tuition, I guess Steve's location is where the place to go. Maybe a little uh, out of your uh, local distance, but. It's worth it. Yeah. Uh, go check check around. Um, wow, that's neat. I haven't seen anybody have that uh, sophisticated uh, facility to support people to make prototypes. Um, I think he had done a good job uh, to set up the service like that. So if you have anything to as we talk about inventor like to have a um, prototype to be made in order to uh, convince yourself whether the idea works or not, and even convince your damn lawyer to uh, help uh, uh, you to apply a uh, pattern. Um, sometimes uh, the physical uh, prototype uh, will also help the lawyer uh, to draft a better protection. Uh, Brian, along the same lines, um, um, I have, I spoke to you in the past where I have several ideas on what I like. Um, one of them, I already have a prototype and I'm using it myself. And that is a um, um, swimming pool, the chlorine filler. I have a self-filling uh, uh, um, cl uh, chlorine dispenser, and um, 
I, uh, I haven't done anything with it other than just I invented it for myself and I'm using it and I have to fill up maybe once in the summer, maybe once a month in the winter, once in three months. Um, do you think there's a market for that? Uh, without seeing your product, I don't know. There is a market for everything, whether it is a big or, um, or small, it depends how uh, you market. Uh, your product and also um, in nowadays uh, pandemics and digital whatever I think uh, e the easy way to tell yourself whether this is a um, <coughs> product can can have a market or not just make a prototype and then um, take the prototype to ask around. O although I, 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 I'm telling you what I hate to do because I don't, I don't like focus group. Nor do I want to, uh, nor do I want to, uh, uh, focus uh, groups are a joke. Uh, so, okay. So here's the way I came about, um, years ago when I was much younger, um, I have a swimming pool and I would just forget to put in the chlorine and uh, sometimes I don't go out in the backyard quite uh, too much. So all of a sudden I'll see my, my pool uh, turn green because I forgot to put in the chlorine. So tablets. So I'm thinking to myself, why don't I have some automated um, system that is just going to feed itself and uh, then I, ha I have to remember to fill up maybe once a month or once every two months. Mm. And that way I don't have to worry about the pool turning green. Well, I have a cat. Uh, my wife uh, bought a cat food auto feeders. Uh -huh. You will never forget to feed the cat, the auto feed. This may be the same concept you can use. I think the cat would remind you. Hmm? I think the cat will remind you if the cat's hungry. Um, if the cat knows how to talk to me, yes. Oh, uh, the cat won't, will not uh, uh, start crying and meowing and mauling at you? No. I'm, no. I'm hungry, I'm hungry. <laughs> well, but that, I'm, I'm giving you that uh, concept yeah mm -hmm. yeah i understand but yeah I, I mean yes it's um how often do you have to fill up that uh container we only fill in the cat food once a week okay that save a lot of a hustle yeah so Okay, so I did not see anything like that for a uh, swimming pool. And there may not be a need for that, or it may be just a regional where there's hot, hot weather a lot, like, you know, Florida, Arizona, California, um, Nevada, maybe where there's hot weather quite often. Is it, uh, this product also flow around the pool? It's in the, it's in the pool 24 hours a day. So they flow with the water or they stay with one location? Well, it, uh, um, you, you do you have a pool in your house? Yes. Okay. What do, what do you use for a floater? I use a float, float okay. device and then uh, put into the chlorine uh, like a disc. Okay. So that floats around. So my, my thing also floats around. 24 hours a day. Um, but it, uh, but it doesn't, it's uh, the concept slightly different okay. from the one that you have, which you, I'm guessing you probably put in what five tablets or something. Okay. That floats around. Well, I also have a pool man every Thursday comes in. Oh. And I, I would not, I would not say I, I, I have to remember to do <laughs> 
okay. So anyway, I uh, I had it for years and years. It works. I never really pushed it uh, pushed it too much. I didn't think about it much. It was, um, I don't know. Um, I don't know if it's worthwhile to pursue it. Well, but uh, I have other ideas, bigger bigger ideas for to try to retire on yeah, for the future. This pool thing wouldn't uh, wouldn't get me probably a hundred dollars. So. so what do you what do you want to retire from? License your product out, or running a business based on your product? All right, I I, um, I have an idea for a service, um, and uh, it. Uh, would be a direct com competition with uh, Uber and Lyft. Okay. But mine would be much, much better service. And um, uh, right now it's nothing more than just in my brain. And uh, I, I need uh, software people. I need business people how to do all that. It's, it's not a small project. I would need the uh, uh, heavy hitters, heavy investors on that to, to just to get it off the ground. And then, um, honestly, I I don't want to get into a licensing business. I just want to sell it off. Give me the money and uh, be done with it because I don't feel like auditing any company. I don't feel like checking. Um, I, I want to sell it and be done with it. Just give me the money. I honestly, I, I I would want to once once the product or oh, sorry the service is sold, goodbye, type thing. Corey, do me a favor. Um, I don't think any urban workshop people are coming. Actually, both Peter and Austin are my guys. Peter Wong, maybe. And yep, and Austin, they're both uh, they're both in my system. Okay, good. Oh, they are both your assistant? No, no, no. They're, they're both uh, previous members or current members. Okay. Um, but we shall start. I don't mind. I mean, yep. um, maybe next time we go find out that what's wrong technically. Maybe there's nothing wrong. Did, did you guys in the past start at 5 o'clock? No, we say 4 o'clock to 6 o'clock. Yeah, for oh, this okay. one, it's 4 o'clock. Okay. Um, today, I'd like to uh, have a conversation about uh, licensing, although uh, Fred uh, may not be interested to, to, do, to deal with the licensing, but whether you like to license, whether you want to sell off your idea, most importantly, you have to have a compelling story of your idea. What's most uh, most important compelling? Uh, story about your concept, your product, is the sales. Um, if you don't build a prototype, you can only use PowerPoint or uh, verb verbiage to describe your product, like your Uber uh, or Lyft replacement. It's very, very hard to sell them. So either you make a digital dummy prototype, make them look like, work like, function like, and then you can go ahead to combine your PowerPoint, combine your experience, combine your, um, your, your speech. I assume, Fred, you can actually make your speech the little bird from the tree will come to, to your hand. Then you can catch them. Um, I, I never tried, but I suppose I could. <laughs> but, <coughs> <coughs> but most importantly, I try to uh, convince to my student to um, to do something little in a very small scale. 
Uh, let me give you a, let me share the screen of mine. This is my, uh, my first product I created. It's an auto sunshade. When I make the prototype, I cut off my bed sheet. And then I put two loops, sew on, two metal loops, sew on the fabric. With my friend Joyce Cherry, she um, helped me to do a little small scale. And then, boom, the product showed up. Then I went ahead to even uh, use my scholarship money. I bought the fabric from DuPont's distributor from Buffalo, New York, shipped to my apartment, and then get some loops, and I make 2,000 of them without uh, anybody invest because no one wants to invest into my company or invest into this product. The reason being, how much you are selling, Brian? I can sell $20. They say, no way. There is another product called uh, Auto Sunshade as well. Used cardboard to build them. And then I like accordion. They fold, fold in, extend it, and then push uh, into a, a stack of a book. Like, <laughs> and they selling in retail, three ninety nine. They selling in Pet Boy four ninety nine, Walmart, Target three ninety nine. You you can't compete. So therefore, when I invest in you, your product is way too high. I was a dumb and brave when I was a student. So that was the idea I came up from the class. Um, so I made 2,000 of them. And I went to Pasadena Rose Bowl, swap me. I buy, I bought a uh, easy up, a um, little cheap uh, tent to set them up, start selling them. I sell $20. The first two days, I sold them all. Now I got a compelling story. I am able to sell this $20 while other guys selling the, the cardboard sunshade around five bucks to three, to $3. And then I went ahead to ask for investments. No one gave a shit about me. Even I have a compelling story selling in swap me. But I don't need investor anymore. Cost me domestically uh, $8 to make. I sell, I'm selling $20. Do I still need investors? No. I just use the money I made, invest again, make 5,000 pieces again even selling in uh, from swap meat of Rose Bowl. And then I was also able to sell in the swap meat in uh, Costa Mesa, Orange County. Wow. I sold that 5,000 pieces within, let's just say a week, uh, two weeks because the swap meet was in the weekend. 
all gone. I took this compelling story and the product. I went to a company called Fatco. There are nine stores, local nine stores with membership. They are almost like Costco and Target type mix in between. I went to see the buyer. The buyer's name is called Butch Wasakowski. He's in charge, hotline, auto purchasing, merchandising director. So I said, um, I, um, I showed them a product. That was the first time I have done my sales pitch to the corporate buying uh, staff. And he looked at me and said, Did you, how many you sold? I said, I approximately sold 10,000 pieces um, from swap meet. So, okay. Get out of here. I said, why? I want you to go home to make a color packaging. Because at that time, I don't even know how to make a package. I have a, a poly pouch and black and white instruction sheet. I will buy from you. No shit. You're going to buy from me? That's it? I said, yes. I have nine stores, but I want you. I'm going to, I, I am even giving you a and cap space but you promised me to make a video how to use it because based on what i heard you do a lot of a demo while you were in the uh swap me selling so people impress i assume people impressed with your folding unfolding and com how compact after the product being fold. I am impressed, but make sure you make a video and educate people how to use the product and buy nine uh, VCR and TV combo set for my store. And I'm going to set that up as a TV demo inside of my nine stores with end cap location. I don't even know what the heck is an end cap at the time. But I was, I was a brave and stupid to uh, to to uh, order the product from China, no longer made in U.S. and shipping in with the color packaging. The product sold out in three weeks with one container. One container contained. 50,000 of them. Wow. Why am I telling you this story? Compelling story you generate for marketplace. That's why the buyer convinced. If without the swap meat sales, no one, no one give a shit about me. No one give a shit about this product. And after three months was selling in FECO, I received a phone call. May I talk to the owner of this auto sunshade? I said, who the hell you are? I pick up the phone. And he said, I am Colin Cremo from Price Company. Did you hear, do you know Price Company? I say, no, I don't know. Okay, do you know Price Club? I say, yeah. Price Company own Price Club. I think you guys are old enough to 
to know price company, right? Or price club, right? They bought out by Costco eventually. They have a five, they have 250 uh, stores around the nation. As a, as a matter of fact, Price Club, Price Club start the concept of membership warehouse retailer. So um, he said, I would like you to come over to visit me. I like to talk about business. So we, I, I was dumb and bold enough to drive myself. Um, at the time, I don't have salesmen, so I need to act like I am a big company. So I went ahead to pick up one guy from the street, look, look semi-decent. I said, come with me acting like my salesman, uh, at least pretend like this time, because I need a sales manager or director. At that time, I can't even fast enough to, pr to print a business card for him. But we went there, the guy said, I want to do exactly like uh, FECO, but I have 250 stores. FECO only have nine. Do you want to work with me? I said, why not? What's wrong? Well, because uh, they know each other. Because Butch Wasagowski would not be happy. I say this is a free country. What the hell? I, I, did marry, I did not marry him. Why should I not sell him to you? So he said, okay, let's try it. I, I give you five stores to test. If successful, I roll, I roll, roll up to all stores. Five stores very successful with the video. Remember, with, with the video, that was a butch idea. And then he, uh, he kept his promise. He um, actually opened uh, 230 some stores for me because of the rest of the store are not an A store, not a B store, not a C store, it's a D store, the food traffic's poor. So he didn't want to do that with my product. So keep the, uh, st the story short. The first year I'm in, in business with uh, Price Club, first summer, I generate $6 million alone just with uh, uh, Price Club. <clears throat> Why I'm saying why I why am I talking about this is compelling story you generate little by little. Now, if you go to uh, Orange County, Costa Mesa, swap meet, only uh, one third of landscape being used. The the physical swap meet diminished because of the internet. So what that tells, tells us, uh, tell, tell, what this tells us is we've been locked out in a way. You guys no need to walk like workhorse under the sun with the, with the, uh, with the smell of asphalt selling sunshade like crazy. Now you have the luxury to sell your product online, whether it's Shopify, whether it's Amazon Seller Central, Walmart Seller Central, or any other Wayfair, Walmart.com, Target.com. Try it. I call those opportunity digital swap me. You don't need to go to physical swap me. My skin's 10 times darker than right now just because of the sun. When I selling outside in, uh, within the, the physical location, I have a drink, lots and lots of Gatorades. 
during the Shaolin time just because too hot. Dehydrate. Now we don't need to do this. So I always encourage inventor spend uh, use a little money. Hey Fred, where the hell you are? <laughs> he's there. Yeah, he's there. <laughs> thank you, thank you. I'm just joking. Um, <laughs> If you believing in your idea, if you believing in your concept, then do a, spend a little money. Make sure the small scale transaction type make that happen. Then you have a compelling story. At that time. Now, you have several options. If you have a compelling story, you can decide to license to your licensee, or you can make a very nice packaging as a business packaging. You sell the concept entirely, like Fred just said, sell to someone, pay me the check, and also, you don't. You, you, if somebody don't feel comfortable, you say you don't need to pay me hundred percent. Why don't you pay me fifty percent? Then later on, you pay me the balance with another twenty percent, twenty five percent. Then let's make a deal because you do need to get your buyer to have enough capital to kickstart the project rather than make him poor, make you rich. Eventually, nobody would like to deal with you. And in your sales agreement, you can actually ask for certain volume of sales. If you don't make certain volume of sales, then you have the right to take the contract back to your own pocket. So that's how, but that I'm getting it, it too uh, much in detail in a contract term, but that's very important. And then third option, you can follow my step. Dumb and, dumb and brave, form a company, start selling the product. And dealing with all the California employment issues, insurance, custom duty, customer return, manufacturing in China, overseas, and rip off by, by, by suppliers, and knock off by suppliers. That's all the risk running your own business. But the reward could be bigger than just be a licensor or just sell the product. Because no one will buy your product, Fred. I guarantee you. You meet 100 different companies, no one will buy your idea. Here is a fat check. We are going to take uh, pay you, and then we're going to run the business. No one. Even you selling to uh, Leslie Poo, for example, with your uh, Corinne Auto Feeder. Why? Because you do not have success story. You don't have compelling story of your product. So doing a, a $5,000 investment, make a product, make a little website, start selling them. 
If later on you decide to sell the whole thing, you can even sell the website. The website you built worth money too. But that little first step, that baby step, that baby compelling story is inevitable. Brian, may, may I chime in for a second? Please. Okay. Um, the idea that I'm, the one I want to retire on, um, it is not something I can just prototype and, and put it out on the street. Um, Why not? Because same reason uh, Uber uh, and Lyft did not just uh, put out a, a car on the street and, uh, and make it work. They had to put, it, put uh, together a company to make it work. I don't know the, how they started originally, but I'm fairly certain they didn't just put out a couple of cars on the street and, uh, and show it off. Uh, Fred, let me correct you. Okay, please do. I do believe you haven't done your own due diligence. You're, you may be right. This is not insult. This is, this is something I hate to tell you that Uber start with two black SUV built by Ford driving around San Francisco and waiting for people to use Uber. Only two black SUV. They started business this way. And lucky enough, one day, the friend tried to help him hooked up with some angel fun people. So they, the guy just came, came out San Francisco airport try to go back to um, Sunnyvale area. So they, the friend at, their friend asked the angel investor to use Uber because they want him to look at Uber, how Uber functioned. And then whether you hate it or, 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 or love it, you might have tried that. The guy was brave enough to say, go. I will do it. Boom, download the app, then call Uber. Actually, the Uber wasn't functioning that well. They pretend in their website, in their app, they pretend they receive order using their own phone. Call the driver, go to the airport to pick up that guy. The guy, wow, Uber actually works. Work my ass. They are they making a fake a uh, working prototype like that. So after the guy being delivered back to Sunnyvale, next week, he showed up in Uber's office. And the secretary don't even know he's a, a investor, telling him to wait in the lobby for two, for, for, for almost half an hour. The guy about to leave. So eventually, Travis, the guy, one of the founder, recognized that was a investor. Holy shit. But keep the story short. That's how people play the rough prototype and then make the business transaction by lying the investor, which is not it's not for bad intention. It's just the prototype of the app wasn't functioned that well. Every prototype has its own problems. You just have to overcome the prototype. Fred. Where the hell are you? He's gone now. Fred! Hopefully he's still listening. Hey, Brian, this is Melissa. 
Melissa, how are you? <laughs> Good, how are you? Until Fred gets back, can I ask a quick question? Yes. Okay, so a prototype, okay, it's it's kind of makeshift, right? Because I don't have access to a sophisticated place like Steve talked about um, because I'm located in Durango, Colorado. So I'm way over here in the mountains, but I'm sure I could figure out how to perfect this prototype. So upon my, you know, putting it together um, where I can go out and create a compelling story, um, any advice on how to do that, to actually get one, get a prototype where I can actually multiply it somewhat like your sunshade and then get out there and hustle and create that compelling story? Um, you know what? <coughs> Based on your location, let me make a suggestion. I don't know how Steve's uh, how Steve's uh, work, work out with people not local. Why don't you uh, get a Motel 6 in Orange County and then fly to Steve's location and maybe sign in his membership and take a week or two, stay there to finish your prototype. Where are you again? I'll see if I can find the spot next to you. That's a great idea. I'm located in Durango, Colorado. Durango, Colorado? Okay. Give yep, me, give me Durango. A talking here. Yeah, and Denver is about five hours. Why are you sending people away, Steve? <laughs> Not sending away, just trying to be helpful. Because so you are very helpful. Uh, <laughs> You have a very helpful organization. Even uh, ne nearby where her, sh her location may not as good as your facility. All she needs to do is spend uh, one week or two weeks to finish everything. And then she can carry a beautiful baby, which is her prototype, back to where she belongs to. And I normally like to uh, recommend people make a lease one or two or three prototypes, one for your own, one for your buyer, or one for your lawyer, or one for your manufacturer. So you ask Steve to make four prototypes for you. Because you have to understand, your prototype going to oversee production it's very difficult to come back. Without your prototype, you don't even know how to draft a pattern application to protect yourself. Without prototype, you don't even know how to make a package, the size, and without prototype, People have tough time to to understand how that function. You're going to make a lot of mistakes in prototype for the first one. Then after you fix them, you may still need to fix, make three proto the third level prototype until you prove everything okay. Then you duplicate at least three four level three prototypes then you can start generating some sort of a small scale um, production run to generate your compelling story. Thank you, Brian. And Steve, I can get your location and everything from the information that you sent in the chat. That's correct. Yeah, I put the, the website in the chat and uh, from there you can get all the information you need. Okay. All right. Thank uh, you. Yeah, you're welcome. Thank you.
Uh, I'm telling you, Steve's facility is rather handy. And I see a lot of good prototype came out from uh, his facility within his members. I don't see many facility as good as his. Although I graduate from the design school, we have a very sophisticated model making, proto prototype making facility. But that's a school. His facility is very similar to the level of my school. When I go to see his shop, I say, fuck, I'm, going, I'm, I'm back to school now. I saw I, 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 I will never uh, make my hand dirty anymore after I make my millions. But the, the child, the, the, uh, the, the, the child's heart, or the, like the play, uh, the, the desire of play, uh, uh, wood and metals and plastic, hand-making stuff, is always in my blood. I, I'm, I'm, I was very uh, impressed with Steve's facility. Yeah, thank you. You're welcome. So if you need a temporary membership, or uh, Steve can come up some temporary membership, then we, you can fly people from other distance. Just spend a week or two weeks. Steve may extend the help to help you to make a, to turn a piece of shit into a diamond. And then at that time, you will be able to figure out how much this will cost and whatever you you from you, you actually turn your rough concept from A jump to Z. Inevitable. You're gonna make shitloads of mistakes, I guarantee you. But so what? Making mistake with, with one prototype, much better to make a mistake in thousands of uh, production run. I just put my cell number in the chat if you uh, if you have specific questions later, you can give me a call. Okay, thank you, Steve. I do have a quick question. Um, long story short, when I lived in Albuquerque, they I was into jewelry making um, with silver, and uh, it's really delicate to work with. And they had a facility where I think it's the same concept you have, where you pay a membership and you show up and you can use all their workshop tools and everything to do your jewelry. You can come and go throughout the day when convenient. Is that the same concept? Same concept. That's okay. generally being one specialty. That's generally what they call a single specialty makerspace where we're a full scale commercial makerspace. Okay. Yep. You said okay. you were in Durango, right? Yes, correct. Okay, so I found a place called Maker Lab in Durango. It's really small, mm -hmm. uh, but I, I don't know what, since I don't know what your product is, um, you might be able to go over there, play a little bit, and see if that helps you. And then if you get ready to scale up or fix some bigger problems, uh, you know, we're always here too. Okay, that sounds great. Yep. Mm -hmm. and we have a major, well, not a major airport, but we have an airport and we can fly to California. <laughs> yep. Yeah, Thank you. Uh, Steve's facility just uh, nearby the John Wing Airport in Orange County. <clears throat> so if you need Steve's help to help you locate a uh, reasonable hotel, which which is every hotel is reasonable now, just because of the pandemic. So um, spend two weeks in Steve's facility and Steve's machine and and, and Every everything's ready, and Steve can even help you out if necessary to correct your design, to modify your functionality, 
modify. You, you have to make work like, look like prototype to convince yourself. I am a good sketch person, but I never trust my own sketch whether it function or not. I have to use a cardboard, wood, plastic to build a work like prototype. Uh, to convince myself. And then we will go to 3D printing. And um, I also teach students in my uh, course about how to get a cheap 3D model. I have several students follow my recommendation make a 3D model um, from Steve's area to make them a first generation, able to ship to China and make semi-production prototype. And then at that time, you can even ask for the price, the cost, then you know roughly how much cost you to make one or make a thousand um, Steve uh, how people in your computer lab works uh, if Anybody who are not savvy in 3D, how you can help? I mean, we have several programs. We have classes straight up where you can take a class to learn how to use the CAD software for yourself. Uh, for some who have a technical background or, or a good understanding of what they're trying to do, that's enough for them to design it. Um, if you need somebody with a, a bit more expertise to help you along with the designs, and we've got what we call maker mentors here. Um, basically, it's sort of a on a contract basis. You can pay our guys 125 bucks an hour, and they'll sit with you and help you do the design work and development work. Um, and then outside of that, too, we have a, a pretty solid community where we just try and match people up. You know, we have a, a lot of engineers, um, fabricators, manufacturers, all in in house, and uh, our members tend to be sort of primary consultants for each other. It's like, hey, I designed this part. I need somebody to make it for me, but I don't know how to run the machine. Can somebody do it? Um, so we have like private Facebook groups for members only that we can post, hey, you know, I need help with this. I need help with that. Or I can do this and I can do that. So uh, I mean, honestly, I spend most of my time just making connections, just, hey, talk to that person. And, and that works out pretty well. Yeah. Uh, Corey, you mind to share the screen? about accelerator sure let me pull it up right now give me one second huh. you guys can see my screen right yes yep this is the course i offered before pandemic is in person. Those are my one of my one 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 of the term of of my student they graduate. And they are very uh, how do I describe very much uh, run the way I, I, I walk them through, teach them how to do it, and they all in business. Unfortunately, the pandemic, they are not able to go to China. Even I hooked up the manufacturer, hooked up the Airbnb in China, hooked up the translator in China for them. So all been, uh, been frozen until the pandemic. Um, I hope it's gone. I, I don't know that it will be ever be gone. Um, so, but that's uh, also 
you might scroll down what's inside the accelerator. Do you have that, Corey? Yeah, let me go to those sections. Let me go to the overviews. Inside of, uh, of um, accelerator, obviously, <clears throat> Because it's a full, uh, around it, um, course. So we even start from how to create your stuff, how to set yourself with, with creative mindset. Um, go ahead, to session two, please. Section two is even you are designers, even you are not want to do business forever with your product, but you need to create a trademark, create a brand, create online swap me to run just like a very small scale transaction to generate compelling story. How? You're not going to compete with the company already generate shitloads of money and had a huge occupation of market, uh, marketplace. So find your own niche. How to find a niche with your concept to launch. Talk, we're talking about that. Let's go to section three, please. How to raise money, I teach. Go to crowdfunding or online flea market. And then how to protect your idea and generate trademark, copyright, or domain name. Now, nowadays, domain name is very important. How to deal with USPTO? How to use an LLC or corporation to protect yourself, not to use your own so-called sole proprietorship. That's very dumb. Never do that. Any injury of your product to the consumer, they will wipe out entire wealth of your own. So use LLC, use, form a company to manage your business and product. Section four, please. how to do the B2B, B2C, what's your item? Is B2B, B2B friendly or B2C friendly? You need to identify yourself. And then whether your product is physical or not, you have to deal with all the digital environment right now with social media, all kind of a, a necessary step. And also teach you how to do prototype. What is the prototype? Actually, prototype is a big, gigantic categories. Sometimes you can generate business with prototype. Actually, uh, my auto sunshade is prototype. I, 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 I don't even have retail packaging, nor do I have a barcode <laughs> at the time. And I just sold in swap me. All the around 10,000 pieces I made from LA downtown sweatshop at the time, it's so all production of prototype. It's not even the merchandise. No tra uh, there's a trade name I made, but it's no barcode, uh, no uh, packaging, no other than uh, 
product. Uh, I, 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 I do believe I made a uh, product instruction sheet how to fold them with a black and white illustration. Now, because of uh, technology, we have QR code now. Then you talk about after you have some compelling story, you want to do the licensing, or you want to deal with selling your company, or you want to deal with any modification back to the drawing board, because the market will tell you your product maybe is good enough to make variation sell to different market. The sunshade concept, I made a children play hut. I make pop-up hampers. Same concept, same technology, same, same wire I made and same fabric I used. And since we have uh, e-commerce, go, go to walmart.com uh, Walmart or Amazon. Sign, build a store. Even you don't make any profit, but you make your name out there. You generate compelling stories. Section five, please. I even tell you how to go to spend your money after you make some money. We're on six right now, actually. Manufacturing, marketing, fulfillments, O2O, offline, online. From, from online to offline, that's called O2O. Running business, just like running every, running your life, you need to exercise. Practice. And then there's an uh, additional section for call bonuses. This course will running for five thousand dollars, but after pandemic, I <clears throat> no longer can do in person. So I dropped it down to two thousand dollars. So if you guys want to make less mistake, this is the navigation guideline business coaching. You have to understand, throughout the business uh, history, I walk into a lot of landmine by not knowing better. I lost my arm, I lost my leg, but I'm able to survive, that's, thank God. But you guys don't need to run into my painful history. Do it right, do it correct, instead waste $50,000 mistake in the in running a business, running a concept, running a development, this $2,000 course will save you a lot of mistake. So if you guys interested, I'm acting like a salesman now, try to, yeah, try to convince you guys you use, after you have this purchase this book you will make less mistake i will yell at you if you make a mistake no i'm just teasing 
Um, it's my history, my real experience. I hate to tell you, the first year I'm in business, although I make very successful sales, but I don't know how to handle the fast growing demand of the market. So I was dumb enough to airship six containers. Airship, you heard about airship six container. That never, nobody done that stupid things, but I have done that to satisfy buyers yelling, you fucking bozo, Brian. I don't have any more inventory in my location. Where the fuck is the good? Oh my God, call him, calm down, calm down. No, I can't, my management yelling at me. Oh fuck. So I have to airship them. By airship six container, I have to sell 20 containers of good to pay for the cost. And I was dumb enough to try to listen to people. And the people come to here acting like a licensee, but try to steal my technology, steal my factory information. I don't know better. So I have a nine lawsuit, the first year in business, suing infringement because my sunshade has no, no difficulty for anybody on the knockoff. As long as they have a sewing machine, buy a wire, they can be in business to compete or knockoff. Painful. You've seen your baby being knockoffed and people generate income from your concept, from your product. I lost my sleep by even thinking about this. But guess what? With my coaching program, you guys don't need to have the headache. <clears throat> The book is in a beautiful English writing, which is not come from come up from me, come up from Corey and other um, content generator of my own people. And then inside the besides the writing, I put up a lot of Chinglish. I speak uh, with heavy Chinese accent video telling you how painful I was running my own business, but also telling you how much you enjoy your success. I'm giving you the truth of mistake I made and the success I had. As an inventor, I'm here to help inventor. I don't want my inventor fellows need to deal with what I have done with. Deal with the mistake I made. Believe me, painful. No one like me, I have bad reputation. Why? Because this guy likes to file lawsuit against people. But inside my heart, I say, yes, I fucking create a reputation. No one would like to mess around with me. But if you don't file a lawsuit, why the hell you pattern your idea? But lawyers are expensive. Sell your product, generate income to take care of the legal expense. You have no other way besides generate income. 
when the income comes, when the PO comes, your business can turn. So that is my course. Um, oh, Corey, you already out? Yeah, I'm actually organizing the links. I'm gonna send the links to everybody after this meeting as well. So you guys can take a look at it more in depth if you need to take more time to view it. Mm. But I'll send that to everybody momentarily. I, I know everybody who's in here already. Thank you. No problem. There is a lot of, I am, uh, listen, let me give you a little encouragement. I came to this country as a foreign student. I was studying my English in the little town called Chini, half an hour from Spokane, Washington. <clears throat> I did not expect the school is located in a small town. I expect here, uh, here I am in America, at least something look, at least look like Seattle instead of Chini. But I was fortunate to stay in a American family, father's Alan Hale, retired Air Force Colonel, six boys, living in the household, including me, seven. All my faulty language is all their fault. I learned those faulty languages faster than any English verbiage from school. And then I came to Art Center College of Design in Pasadena to get my degree of industrial design. I'm a goddamn foreigner, foreign student. If I can make it in this country, so what's wrong with you? When I go to interview the buyer, I don't even know what the fuck is the ANCAP means. He said he gave me an ANCAP location. Huh, huh? ANCAP location, what's ANCAP means? So if I can make it, you guys sh should do better. And if I, if my book, my edu coaching, educational stuff, is very cheap, less than $2,000. Any student purchase my course, I also offer some individual coaching for free at this time because pandemics. I would like to see one of you or more of you being successful. I guarantee you, you will run, to, run into a difficulty, run into a situation, run into money issue, prototyping issue, inventory issue and manufacturing issue. Set up an email, call me. I offer 15 to half an hour consulting for you guys. If you purchase the product, no joke. I um, go to uh, all these website and hear all the testimonial. Those are real people, real student. And I love to have Steve to be here is to know whether you guys have some needs Steve can offer. I think Steve should think about maybe offer a short-term membership 
like Melissa, right? Um, just for two weeks membership to help her to build something tangible and help her out. Hotel cheap now. Airfare is even cheap. <laughs> well, happy, happy to talk with you, Melissa. I, to all of you, actually, I put my cell phone in the chat. So give me a call and I'll uh, do whatever I can to help. You, doesn't, you, you don't need to only take care of locals. I know we like to see the local folks a lot, but the other people just showed up. You, you just have a, like a two weeks boot camp, prototype boot camp, help out. Yeah, yeah, something like that could work. I, I know our Maker Mentor program might actually be a slam dunk for this right off the bat, and we're already doing that. So um, yeah, just need to learn more about what y'all are doing. Chime in one more time the name of the, the program. The Maker Mentor program. Maker Mentor, okay. Yep. Approach Steve. He will be able to help you out. All right, any more questions? I, I, got, I actually have one from uh, Stephen Davies, who's in here. I, I, I believe it's Davies. He Davies. said, he said, I have built a prototype. I am conflicted whether to, is this patent or protect? Oh, to, to, to patent or not. Can questions be asked about that? I have, a, I have built a prototype. I am conflicted whether to patent or not. That's pretty much the question. Uh, it's it's uh, too big a question without knowing what product it is. Um, without knowing the market uh, uh, marketplace, the, the demand of the marketplace. If it's very minimum, then we, we will make different decision. If the marketplace is big, why not? But the, is the prototype to, to, to level convince, convince you enough this is a good product, good concept? Obviously, every concept come out from you. It's your baby. Of course, my baby is beautiful. We all buy it. We all prejudiced. Who the fuck telling my kids it's ugly? I go, I go to kill him. But in business, we have to put aside the personal feeling. Let's analyze how much we can generate the business. But when I was doing my first patent for the sunshade, I have to give my, myself a credit because I was a dumb and stupid, spent $5,000 for first application, the gentleman uh, it's very, very good friends of mine now called um, Charles uh, <laughs> Charles Swap. The guy um, is a um, very successful patent lawyer. He helped me to apply for the first patent. But guess what? He made a mistake. He forgot or he wasn't listening to me. Um, or he won't get it easy out. So he patterned the, the sunshade with two loops with one fabric. I have a drawing for the sunshade, one, one loop segregate from another loop. So I have two piece sunshade, I can do it. But now, both products selling like a equally big volume then I have to sue the other guy. And the story still have an end until later on we settle with the knockoff with two pieces segregated shades. Very, very smart Jewish patent lawyer, but 
make the mistake. So when you go to consider pattern, what is Steve, right, Stephen, what is the feature and benefit? And compare with existing product in the market. Any unique novelty you have. That's all up to you. I can't answer you right now because I don't know what it is. He actually just dropped another question in the chat. Well, he, I think he accidentally dropped it to me, but I put it in the chat right there. Okay. I need to get my glass. Oh, can you just read to me? Sure. I can't read. In terms of infringement, getting a patent exposes the idea internationally. Then it can be stolen and marketed overseas in a foreign country where my patent has no ability to be defended. An average patent application costs what, 15,000? Consumer product, right? I hope is um, US has um, almost 40% of the international market. China is growing. Europe stayed, stayed the same. I hate to tell you, protect the US. The rest of it, you just have to deal with country by country. You can't win the lawsuit from China. The Chinese government tells everybody, go to America, study in their university, steal their technology, bring back to China. We even give you money to form factory, to form a lab. So you, if you go to sue them, not to worry. We kick every foreigner out. That's, how, that's why Donald Trump is fighting with Chinese government. It's not fair because they have a cheap labor. They have, uh, we coach them how to build stuff. Now they use their capacity, copy us. Now the market growing, so they, they don't need, actually when they copy our concept, they don't need an American market anymore. Their own market can help the business running. So your question is way too big. It's sadly to tell you our patterns value diminished because Chinese factory and Chinese market they don't fucking respect our intellectual properties. But when you build product for US market, that's big enough. After proof of success, and you decide whether you want to deal with the foreign pattern. I went to UK with people with the fake wig in the court, suing the company in UK. Guess what? I lost too. Why? Your company is American company. Why the fuck you muscle around in our UK court? I lost twice. I went to Italy. They laughing me. They were laughing me, say, get the fuck out here. Here has no, jurisdic no jurisdiction you can win. Okay, I listened. Japan, no, no way. Germany, no way. So, that's a sad reality. But that doesn't mean we should not file patent to protect ourselves 
in this country. This is the only this is the only uh, last frontier for IP law to protect your idea in this country. He, there's no other way, no other country or places you can protect yourself. So thank God, enjoy while you can. For this reason, I decided to stay in this country because I enjoy the protection. Even cost me shitloads of money to fight in court. <clears throat> I don't know I answer you or not. Mr. Davis, you might to uh, talk to me unmute your mic. Oh, yes, hello, can you hear me? Yes. I don't know how you can hear me, but I'm glad you can hear me. You don't know how we can hear you. We all can hear you. Be careful when you say something. <laughs> Thank you. It's my first time on listening to you, and uh, and and uh, I have to say I'm inspired with all the profanity because that's how I talk too, and it does get to the point, doesn't it? And we have to deal with reality here and this kind of uh, take responsibility as an inventor. Um, there's a lot of considerations where the rubber meets the road. And so in terms of my question with the patent and everything, thank you so much for addressing that. Um, you know, I'm still stuck on, if I can uh, just continue for another 30 seconds with your time on that, is that okay? Yeah. Okay, so, um, you know, I live in San Jose, California, Northern California. They have, they've had, up to the COVID thing, a lot of opportunities, uh, for inventors, um, meeting zones, I don't know, I think what you call them on first, second street. They even had, and then in fact, the USPTO is, I think on second street right down here, which is one of two only offices in Northern California. And I've attended those meetings with their representatives. I've even gone down to the PTO office and stuff. And I'm still not sold on the advantage of spending thousands and thousands of dollars to protect yourself when it can cost thousands and thousands of dollars to enforce a patent right infringement um, because that still costs money. And then the other side of the coin in terms of marketing the product and trying to save the money of, of investing in patent uh, costs is to just blast, do a blitz creek on the market of your product and marketing it and then um, and just, you know, kind of um, um, wring the towel dry, as they say, to get all the money out of the opportunity of that product before somebody gets the idea to market it themselves, perhaps in some other country. I'm not sure which approach is, is best, but I do know that, that the, obviously the patent one, what is it, a provisional patent can uh, give you the opportunity for a one year, you know, one year, 12 months of, um, on the books with the patent office before it becomes official and nobody nobody can actually contest it officially after 12 months or before and after 12 months but it's not visible for the first 12 months that's the only benefit other than that it's it's expensive to uh, file a patent after 12 uh, to pay for it when it comes due after 12 months and to be potentially even more expensive to defend it in court and that's where i get torn. Yes, you're telling me your opinion about the pattern or the value or the or the cost. Right, uh, value versus cost. Yeah. Yes. Um, in my in my course, I teach students how to uh, make a pattern application within two thousand dollar. 
rather than fifteen thousand dollars. How? There's a several service area. You can get people to draft out your concept within five hundred dollars and with beautiful pattern drawing along with the pattern application uh, draft but you personally you have to really identify your language to identify the feature benefit of your concept. In my course, I teach you how to do that. There's a three to four location you can get people to do that to you. And my student, most of them, all able, they all are able to use that service and they're very happy about. So therefore they already have a one or two pattern being filed. That's the value of my coaching program is I'm a cheapskate too. So I want to use a cheap way to benefit my students. Thank you for the answer. Thanks for the response. Definitely give your course spirit consideration. I'll be thinking about it. Yeah, you should, Steve. Uh, Stephen, I, uh, I, it's lots of hidden value in my course. I, I normally do not even dis like to discuss before you purchase that because my lawyer will hate me. My patent lawyer will hate me, but I was able to, I own 200 US utility patent. I paid the real big money to my lawyer. You, you see my goddamn lawyer's office uh, in front of the parking lot, there's a Rolls Royce there. And my, my lawyer's a Rolls Royce. I look at that one day I went to there, I said, this is my Rolls Royce. I pay too much money. Now I was able to learn and discover there's a, there is a one or two, let's just say, or three location or area you can get beautiful draft in English writing and beautiful draft in pattern drawing, the all USPTO standards. Whether you want to do the USPTO, um, the provisional pattern, or real pattern pending, up to you. Cost you only $250 to do the provisional pattern pending of provisional patent application, PPA. Then 12, in, within 12 months, you can decide whether you want to roll into patent pending, up to you. Yeah, thank you. I sent you a link on the book that I, that I I'm an uh, engineer, mechanical, work in mechanical engineering, so I've, I designed my own prototype using SOLIDWORKS CAD software. So um, if there's anybody here that needs any modeling, give me a, give me a, um, I guess I'll put my phone number on there. You can text me if you're into, you know, talk about an exchange or something. Anyway, I did that myself and I had a machine and built and assembled and, um, Anyway, so where are you, Stephen? San Jose. San Jose, Northern California. Yeah. And there's, you know, it's sort of a mecca here for exactly what you're doing. 
you know, training, inspiration of ideas, um, and networking, uh, both on the as a, as you show on your on your um, email the B two B and B two C and all different aspects of the business development. Um, but you know, it seems so very interesting where there's so many different ways to communicate an idea in terms of marketing. In the old days, it just started out with like website. Now that's considered passe, not even useful, really. It's it's needed, but as a minimal, uh, more more of an anecdotal, you know, thing compared to. I hear people say, "Well, you know, I just do." complete marketing using Facebook, or I do complete marketing using just YouTube or Instagram. You know, I know that's a whole nother conversation. I know that's a big, big one. Um, you know, with, with, with your services that you offer, I guess the training is only probably one aspect. Do you offer any other services in terms of establishing the, the B2, well, the, you know, say uh, e-commerce, for example, connecti uh, connectivity through a website for the specific business. Is there, are there any services through yourself that can be uh, accessed for us and paid for? Was that a question? Or yes, that's a question. You mind to try me one more time? Um, do you offer any services through your your company for the establishing of e-commerce for any person like myself, anybody here watching, is, uh, is to establish for their business. Of course, that's our strength. Um, I, I told you, I don't do any more. Uh, you guys have no need to do any more uh, swap meet sales. Online is the swap meet now. Online is the f swap meet from now to the future. So online business to launch a new idea is inevitable now. Yes, we offer the help. And even in the course, you, you already see the you already reviewed the, uh, the subtitle we had. Whether you want to use Shopify, WooCommerce, or Amazon Solar Central, or WalmartTarget.com, that's a places you can start your selling and marketing, generate certain trustworthy, compelling story for your idea. Then you can make a decision. Damn, I should run my own business. This is a great product. I don't want to license to anybody anymore. Or you can run your business, you can still license to other entity, re, that may re, that may require a modification of your design. Hmm. Interesting. It is. Um, nobody should tell you after you run your own business, you cannot do the license. Let me uh, share the screen to you. After that, we may have to wrapped up the yeah. conversation for today. J just so you know, Brian, I do have to go. It's already been more than two hours now and my kid needs to sleep. But okay. um, just so you guys know, I did email you all the info on the accelerator. So feel free to take a look at that. And if you have any questions on that, just feel free to email me back. I'm in direct contact with Brian every single day anyway. So if you guys have questions on that, feel free to just send me an email. Thank you very much. No Thank problem. You. Are you able to see my screen right now? Uh, yes. Okay. With the baby? So this is uh, auto sunshade I made. And then we produce Play Hut with the same technology. And I, I 
create same 